Big Money Bound TV, RRT Posse YouTube. If you're new to the channel, please like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. I release scheduled videos every Monday, 12 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time, but I also release some unscheduled videos throughout the week. Now, if you're returning, welcome back. I appreciate all of the support. Thank you. Today's video, I'm going to let you know what I learned as a travel respiratory therapist. Had I never went out there to travel, had I never went to Texas, had I never went to Montana, down to Miami, I would have never learned these things. I would have never knew about this information. And I ain't just talking about, oh, respiratory related breathing treatments, vent settings, codes. No, I'm talking about like some real life, real deals, some real sh now, some, some stuff that's for real. You want to know what I learned? I'm willing to tell you, but all you got to do is keep watching just keep watching off rip i'm gonna let you know man respiratory therapy is respiratory therapy no matter where you at that's the that's what i gotta let you know i learned like no matter where you go Respiratory therapy is going to be respiratory therapy. Now that may be different like protocols, different charting systems, different like responsibilities of the RT, but respiratory therapy is respiratory therapy no matter where I was at. I'm administering breathing treatments the same exact way. I'm getting your vitals, I'm getting your saturation, I'm getting your respiratory rate, I'm listening to your breath sounds, I'm giving you the breathing treatment before giving you the breathing treatment, I'm letting you know what the treatment is, how long it's going to last, what is it meant to do, what's the country indications, I'm going to put the nebulizer over your head, I'm going to give you the mouthpiece, I'm going to let you know it's going to take about this minute. Respiratory therapy is respiratory therapy. I'm managing the vent, I'm going to manage the vent the same way I would no matter where I'm at. The ET tube, I'm going to document that. I'm going to suction this. Respiratory therapy is the same no matter where I went. Only thing that changed is like the responsibilities of the respiratory therapist. Some places I went, it was the respiratory therapist's responsibility to bring the emergency airway kit when there's a cardiac arrest, when there's a cold blue situation. So I'd be the one that had to go and get the kit that had the ET tube, the Hollister, the entitled CO2, the um style at et tube to inflate the balloon i had to, i had to bring all that stuff to bedside some places i went the nurses was responsible for bringing that and i just had to assist the doctor okay what size you need bamboo and bagging while the patients get ready to be intubated so respiratory therapy was respiratory therapy no matter where i went at had i never went out there i would have never known that i'd have think oh man they over there in Texas, they doing it different. They over there in California must be different. Down South Florida must be different. Towards Miami area must be different. Like, bro, respiratory therapy is respiratory therapy. When a patient can't breathe, patient sats dropping, respiratory rate increasing, they having respiratory distress. They looking at a rest, the nursing staff is looking at a respiratory therapist as the savior. Like, hey, we need help. Patient can't breathe, help, help, help. No matter where I at, no matter where I was at, they looked at respiratory therapists as the savior when somebody was having trouble breathing. No matter where I was at, like, whew, I'm glad you're here. Can you please help us? My patient, he's not doing so good. Can you come here? Can you please help him? All right, all right, no problem. Let me see what's going on. Patient on two liters. Turn the patient to four liters. Patient said, thank you. I can breathe much better now. You just have to turn up the, turn up the... No matter where I was at, I had to deal with the same nonsense and silliness. Yeah, my patient's on two liters. They're not doing good. Could you come in and help them? Can you turn up FiO2? Yeah, I did, but they're still not doing good. Can you get a venti mask? Oh, I'm not sure how to set it up. Can you please come and show No matter where I went, dog, I had to deal with these same things. Only thing that changed is the protocol, the responsibilities of the respiratory therapist. Then I learned that getting my start at a busy hospital, I mean a hospital that was booming, always stayed busy, you barely had any downtime, you could never complete all your work because it was just too much. That was actually a good thing. I'm actually thankful I got my start in that hospital that was so busy. 
Because once I became a traveler, I was like, damn, if I can work there where I started at, I can work anywhere. And that's what I tell people when I go back to the hospital. Hey, man, yeah, I've been out here traveling, bro. And trust me, if you can work here, you can work anywhere. I'm talking, I started off in a place where um, the count was, you by yourself, you got to count to 62. I'm going to hospitals, you got to count to 18. And when I say account, that's like, for every treatment that you give, that's one, that's, that, that's a count of one. For every vent that you have, that's a count of six. So these numbers are add up until you get to 60. Yes, it was busy as hell. Then I go somewhere else, it only add up to 18. And then they'll be complaining about that. What I learned as a travel respiratory therapist, some people don't know how good they got it, dog. Like, y'all just don't know, man. I took my assignment with a smile on my face. I'm getting paid big money, and I'm doing this light assignment. It may not be light to you, because that's, you, you, that's what you're used to. But to me, this is light as a feather. This is light as... This is light as a... A blowing a kiss. That's <laughs> It's like it's a blown kiss. You can't even like feel this. It. Like, what's going on? Like, no travel assignment that I went to was busier than the hospital that I started out in Florida. The hospital that I started out at in Florida was the busiest I have ever been, still is to this day. Now, the hospital in Miami came close. That's probably the that's not the second. The next hospital I went to in Florida around my way. That was the business. But the one I started in was the first business. The second one I got my PRN job in was the second business. So once I went to go and travel, it was all like, I'm coming from doing a count of 60, 55, 54. I go to a hospital where I got two patients and they all get one treatment. And then I'm done for the rest of the night. And this is during the COVID pandemic, height of the crisis, where they paying you top dollar. I know, I got lucky. Some people got hurt. Some people went out there to Mick Allen. If you know anybody who went to Mick Allen by that border, they said they was out there working. But where I was at, Mount Pleasant, which is like a rural area. It's like, nope, nothing around. Hey, bro, I was shut out to Mount Pleasant, my boy. It was very pleasant to me. Another thing I learned as a travel respiratory therapist is that I'm actually known out here in a respiratory care field. Like in the field of respiratory therapy, like the social media world of it, like people like actually like know me though. I, I, know, I know what y'all saying. Like I know I do the videos, people write comments. And I'm talking I know people like actually know me. It was around the third, um, the third round of the COVID crisis pandemic situation. I had got a job. I had got accepted into um, crucial staffing. I got accepted. I went there. It was a total of like 60 people there. I don't know 60 people. Only four people were respiratory therapists. So this was like, it was lottery tickets at this point. So I got in there. And we had, um, we going, to, we going through the hospital. We going to like the orientation. They showing you around. They got everybody in the class. And the dude just like walked up to me. It's like, hey, how you doing, Randy? Nah. I'm from where I'm from. I'm not the most like, no matter how it may seem on camera, I'm going to keep it real. I'm not the most like outgoing social person unless you get to know me and like i build like i know you okay cool but i'm not just gonna go into the room with people i don't know just everybody hello hey shaking hands shaking hands shaking hands this and that just being friendly what's going on what's this what's that no nah, i'm gonna hey how y'all doing i'm gonna chill i don't know nobody here now if i get to know somebody okay cool so my dog what about me like how you doing randy i'm like kind of taking back like that. and i guess dog seen my face so i was like hey what's going on he was like oh man no I watch all your videos on YouTube, man. I just wanna say thank you for what you're doing. You really motivating people out here. I'm like, damn. Dog said, yeah, man. I'm from Minnesota. Whoa! Bro, I'm from South Florida, like the bottom of the map, like South Florida. You know me up there in where? Minnesota? Bro, when I tell you my head was tight, I'm like, Damn, I'm actually known out here. So then, now once I see like it's a supporter and it's all love, my next thing I said was, cause I hadn't said anything, I was like, oh, so you know why we here then? So bro, if you watch my content, you know it's big money bound, you know we gonna get these riches. So you know why we here, I was like, oh yeah, for sure, I know why we here, man. Thanks for everything, keep the videos coming. And that was it, it wasn't no more than that. And then some people from that hospital actually 
reached out to me via YouTube. It was like, hey, like months later, hey man, did you ever travel yada 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 in Texas? I'm like, yeah, that was me. Oh man, I worked with you. I didn't know you was this big on YouTube. Go, go, go. Hey man, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Because, bro, like, I don't just go into like no hospitals I'm traveling to. I'm a YouTuber. Hey, bro, like, I say, I'm not like, maybe. And I don't know if that's good, because if you're trying to like build your brand, you're trying to be out there, you want to like go places just doing this and doing that, like, you find the content and you mess with it, you rock with it, you hold on to it, that's what I'm doing it for. They may come a time where I may have to force it on people, I'm like, you know what, let me force it on somebody, but until then, I'm just really, somebody asked me like, why are you vlogging? Here go my car. I'm not just going to come into the room just, I, I, I can't just go in there just throwing stuff and people, like, I can't do it, like, bro, I can't, man, like, I just... It's like, it's my upbringing. Like, I'm just so chill and so laid back. Like, bro. Like, Jody Joe would tell you. Like, Jody Joe was like, hey, I did not know you was this funny. Like, I didn't know. I thought you was, like, just too cool for school and all that stuff. Cause, like, bro, if you don't know me, you will never know, man. But shout out to the people that know me. Shout out to the supporters. I, once I always say he was a supporter, oh, it's love. Cool. Hey, Randy. Hey, bro. I don't You, bro, I know you. Can I, can I, bro, I don't. I'm in the middle of Texas. I ain't never been where the hell I'm at. I don't, bro. So you can't know me. I don't, bro. Oh, you... I forget. That's the World Wide Web. You said you up there. Where? Damn. Then another situation that took place when I was down at... Um, I was down there in Miami. It was this dude. He had came into... I, I had already been at the hospital for like... um Shit, been about four or five months. Dog had came in. He was from New York, man. Shout out to my dog. I believe his name was like... um Kiarki. It was like something like that, Kiarki. Shout out to home, man. The dog was real cool. But um, he was like, I asked him, I'm like, yeah, what's up? What's happening? Okay, cool. Cause like I said, I'm gonna speak to you. Like, what's up? But I ain't, ain't gonna be no more than that if I'm, all right, you knew what's happening, bro. Okay, cool. So we was in um, the department, and I had started talking to like the people who was around me. I started talking. The dog was like, hey, I know you, man. You big money bound from YouTube, right? So I'm like, now I'm telling you, I'm not the person that works screaming out, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm that. So if somebody just, these people know me for like five months, I've been just chill, laid back, talking to them, yada, yada, yada laughing a little bit, cool, cool. And all of a sudden, somebody screaming out, you're big money bound to you from YouTube? Like, you got a YouTube? Like, what's going on? I'm like, I'm like, yeah, man, that's me. He was like, all right, man, I knew that was you, like your voice. Because like, we had the mask, and like, I knew that was you from like your voice. So we took off the mask, we were eating and stuff, so we like, okay, yeah, nice, I, I know it's you. He was like, yeah, because I had looked up um, travel respiratory therapy before I came here from New York. Your video, the first video that popped up. I'm like, damn, he's like, yeah, man, I really appreciate all the stuff you're putting out, man. Like, that's amazing. Like, you still got the videos coming every Monday. I'm like, y'all do it every Monday, man. Just keep supporting. So once we talking about this, now people who, are, who I've been working with for five months, I'm like, what? It's Big Money Bell TV? Oh, my gosh, that's you. Like, let's hear you, my bro. People be like, Wow, you got 3,000 something followers? I'm like, subscribers? To me, I'm just like, it's just numbers. I'm just doing my thing. It's just like, it's, it's a way of life now. So when they make it like, it's this, I'm like, damn. Is it really that? Dog said he from New York City. Like, bro, I've been to New York City once. And when I went, I was in a project. Why did I go there and not be in a, and I was in a project? That's a whole different story. But if you want to know that, drop in the comments. I'll let you know. So, yeah. I'm sitting back like, damn. I'm telling my girl like, bro, dog said he know me from New York. Like, bro. I'm in Florida, I ain't, bro, how the f I didn't know it was like that, you feel me? Because I know, like, people viewing the channel, people rocking with it, they leaving comments, but I'm just seeing numbers. I ain't really seeing nobody at home watching me on, on the screen, on the, however how, how y'all consuming this big money bound content, unless, shout out to the supporters who always do this, they'll send me, like, a video or a picture of them watching, like, big money bound TV on their screen TV in their room or on their camera or on their computer. Shout out to them supporters. Like, I love them kind of pictures and photos. They keep me going, like, so... I appreciate y'all for doing that. So if I ain't seeing it like that, I don't know. I just see the numbers, cool. I see the, the fatty, okay, cool. I'm just, it is what it is. Dog was from Minnesota. Dog was from Texas. And now you know, there's people locally who know me. Oh, you ain't vlogging today? What's cool? Because cool? they don't see me like, oh, you ain't vlogging? No, today my day off, man. I ain't vlogging. Speaking of day off, I gotta go pick up my son. Nah, no, I ain't vlogging. Today my day off. You feel me? Yada, 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 yada. On top of the numbers, then you got people in like my comments, you got people in my DMs telling me, hey man, I'm up here in Texas, I'm watching your videos, people coming around me saying, oh, I used to work with Randy when, when he was in Texas, I'm up here, I'm telling everybody about your content, man, so it be all love on the supporters, but I can't like actually see it.
First year students telling me like, yeah, I'm telling everybody in my class about you. You're very helpful. I appreciate all the content that you're putting out. And I appreciate that, man. So I can like, I know it, but I don't really see it. And another thing I know is that, man, when it's about like this showing you love and everything, everybody's trying to see you make it. They love your content, love your content. Like everybody love you when you're in the beginning phases. Your channel kind of small, you bubbling, you building up. Everybody love you when you're on that grind and make it to that top. Everybody got love for you. But once you get there, we've seen it play out. Like, it'd be a different story, dog. Like, folks go to talking greasy. People that just had love for you wanted to see you make it. Then when you get there, it's a different feel. I ain't going to tell you no lot. I don't have a few people like who don't. I seen them. Well, I know about them going through the program, graduating, having that admiration for me, sending me DMs, like, help me with my homework. I appreciate what you're doing. Just like all kind of like flattery and admiration. I want to do this just like you. Then... Somewhere down the line, a DM come through with F you this and that. I'm like, hold on, bro. It was just all love. You were saying this, you were saying that. You motivated me the reason I went into the program. Now it's like that. So I know what can come. I can just imagine what can come with it once I take it to where I know I can take it to. And if you're honest, I want to know if I want to take it where you look. Because I want to be able to just like lay low, vibe, and chill. All that 10 million subscribers, 3 million subscribers. You go out and pull people acting crazy like... I'm from where I'm from, dog, and I ain't really so. Hey, I can. I'm gonna take the way I need to be taken too, but I'm gonna be laying low for real, man. I'm gonna be on the low things, like I ain't even capping. And that's why, that's for the most part, I'm, I'm finna start making like um. I'm giving y'all a little sneak peek though, but uh, big money bound consultations. So for anybody who like DM me like these long paragraphs, three pages, like, and I can't really. DM it back while I'm with my family because it's my family time. I'm trying to answer. All. I want to answer it back to everybody. It's not nobody who DM me, nobody who leave a comment that I ignore, that I don't respond to, unless they on some crazy nut shit. And that, unless they going crazy. Now, if they, even, if, even if they talking greasy, oh, this is stupid, this and that. Hey, thanks for watching RRT Posse because you watched and I appreciate that. You feel me? But I'm going to start like consultations, man, like one on one FaceTimes. Paid by hourly, by like quarterly, and hourly is gonna be paid for. You're gonna get what you paid for. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give y'all the game. Cause I've been giving away game for free for like the last three, four years, man. To only have people turn around and say this and that, this and that. Like, bro, I was just. So I got my family. I got my baby boy. This is how I help provide for my people. So it gotta come with. If you really want it, you're gonna get it. So I got y'all with that. So like I said, I see the numbers, I see the comments, I can read, but I don't physically know that. It's. I hope I'm making sense. It's kind of hard. I just somebody to come up to me, bro. I went to the I went to the schoolhouse one time. I hollered at my old teacher. A student stopped me in the hall. It was like, hey, I watch you on YouTube. I was like, oh, okay, thank you. But I was in my city. I was in my county. I'm way over here. Homie, wave from up there. Homie, wave from up here. New York, Minnesota. They up. Bro, that's up there. I'm from the bottom of the map. Thank you for what you're doing. Damn. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie to you. I felt like... I felt like I'm really, you know... I felt like I'm really making a difference in that. Like, it feel good when people are really watching your content, man. They really, like... It's really, like... Affecting them. They really getting, like, a feeling from it. Like, an emotion. Like, motivation. You feel me? So, they let me know I'm doing something for real. Another thing I learned, man, I'm in a position, I'm in a good position that's really sought after. I'm in a position that a lot of people want to be in. What I mean when I say this is that when I was out there traveling, man, Texas especially, everybody goal, when we sat around and we kicked it, everybody goal was the man, I hope this stuff don't end before I'm able to buy me a house. I'm like, buy you a house? I just want to be at home. I want to buy a house. I'm like, damn. I, I bought a house. Like, I, already, I, I did that. I'm just thinking, like, you know, when you live in your life and you're doing what you're doing, it's not really a big deal to you. It ain't really like, you know, it's an accomplishment, but it ain't really like, you just feel like you kind of get naive. Like, this is what people are doing. This is what you're supposed to do. You feel me? This is just what I'm doing. This is what it is. And you ain't know, like, oh, everybody want to get here. They want to do this. They want to do that. I'm like, damn. And then you got people saying stuff like, yeah, man, when it's over, dog, I'm going to the Dallas Mall. I'm going to go buy all that Gucci, that Louis. I'm going to do this. They're going to get designed up. 
And where I was at with it, I had already been doing that. I was like, I, I'm like, yeah, but I'm trying to like, I'm trying to kind of fall back from that stuff. I'm trying to really stop this and really do something like for real. Like, so I had a, I went there with a mindset that I got to get my little one right. So my whole mindset had already changed. I was already off of that. I had already done that. Like, I gave them folks too much of my money. And to be honest, I didn't really give them a lot. I didn't, I said, I, I ain't give them more than like 8,000. So I don't probably get like seven. It don't went up though, but I ain't give them many. In the grand scheme of things, I ain't really give them that much. And that is a lot. So I was kind of off of it. So this somebody said, yeah, I'm trying to, I ain't got none of that stuff. Like, damn, I'm trying to get off of that. And it wasn't just that. It wasn't just me. It was people who was in like, I had a, I had a homie up there, man. Shout out to my home girl, man. She just called herself my cousin. But she was like old enough to be like an aunt to me. She just called herself like my cousin. Especially when like the women was like, yeah, you know, Randy, like, that's called me Florida. That boy from Florida, he has some, he has some. My cousin was like, well, the girl, the lady was like, nah, y'all don't want my little cousin. Y'all don't want my cousin. He got a baby on the way. Nope, that's my little cousin. He got a baby on the way. Because I told her. She's the only one I told her. I'm like, yeah, man. Yeah, I got a, I got a jet on the way. I'm trying to like get this money for my little one, man. She's like, yeah, you ain't really talking about doing that much money. I'm like, bro, because I don't want to tell everybody, I got a kid coming, I got a kid coming, I got a kid coming. But we had got kind of close. That was my homie. Even when I had my jet. She reached out to me like, hey, how the baby doing? Send me some pictures. Send us some pictures. It was all love. Like, hey, shout out to my dog. I remember, man. She's like, yeah, y'all don't want my little cousin. He got a baby on the way. Like, she was like, <laughs> she wanted me to keep my mind still, get this money and get back to my family, man. Shout out to her. But she had already, like, she was like, she paid off her house. Her goal was to now go and buy two more properties once she leave Texas. Because her dad was like a realtor investor. And she was trying to get two more properties. So she was like, I sold her three homes. So we look like, damn, there's people in positions that you like, damn. But I didn't know that, like, I ain't gonna say I didn't know. I learned that the position that I was in, a lot of people wanted to be in, man. A lot of people wanted to be in that position. I'm like, yeah, bro, I, I'm like, yeah. Like, bro, you trying to get a house? I'm like, no, I already got a crib. You already got a house? They look at me like, bro, you young. Like, I was in a crib. I was in, I was in a rough story therapy for four years. I don't know, hmm. Well, it wasn't even a full four years. It was like three and some change. I ran it up, and I was able to get a house. But another real thing that really helped me, I ain't gonna lie to you, something that really helped me is, besides the OT and the saving, was that I had already been employed since I was 17 years old. And when I turned 18, they made me a full-time employee. And they gave me a 401k. I didn't want no 401k. I'm like, man, I can save my own money. I don't want nobody saving no money. For me. I can save my own money. But I said, you know what? I'm just keep it. Whatever. I ain't canceling. So every every time you work, I had my percentage at like five percent, six percent. They was taking it out, putting the four one k. Taking it out, putting the four one k. Since you look up, I had like sixty five thousand enough. So then, when you get a house, they look at like your cash flow, your investments, how much money you got on hand. They look at four one k as an investment. So like, damn, you making money? You got sixty five k over here plus the savings. Oh, you good to go? Plus what Jody Joe brought to the table? That's like, hey, y'all scrape. Y'all good. So had it not been for that 401k, I ain't gonna lie to you. I wouldn't even stay those 65 bands. But for my retirement, that's where it's at. It was like, that's money you can like pull from. Forget all the penalties. That's money that you can pull from. So they look at it like an, an investment. And I knew that because I read up on it. I was like, yeah, I got my 401k. You got 401k? So yeah, man, that really like, that put me in a position to buy a home. I'm really, <laughs> I'm thankful I ain't delete that job. Man. I was like, I'm finna cancel that 401k. I'm glad I ain't do that. Overall, but I learned like overall like, what really rounded this whole thing off and brought it like full circle, man. What I learned was that within that traveling, man, I learned it's a lot of people that's out there that is just like you. That's just like cool, laid back, down to earth, just as ambitious. They want this stuff as bad as you do. They want to run these bands up how you want to run it up, dog. Like, y'all from like different areas, but y'all can kind of like Got interest in the same things like sports, respiratory, you trying to get this money, you trying to get back to your people, you trying to, you got goals to elevate yourself, you came from like not the best circumstances, but you making a way, you making it possible. I didn't, bro, I learned there's people out here that's just like me doing the same thing in respiratory therapy field, man. Cause you can't feel, I'm in like a hospital, I'm the youngest person in that working, you feel me? I'm the, I'm the youngest, I was the youngest person in my respiratory, respiratory therapy department working, running it up. You get down, it's people your same age, even younger, trying to run these masks up. You're like, bro, you feel like me, but 
I would I didn't really know that so I went and I learned that like hey it's people like that's just like me trying to get these bands that's getting to it people like hey bro we ain't going home until it's over people coming up man I'm tired of hey, hey, hey remember now we ain't going home until it's over though so if you sleepy go lay down go get you a bed go get you some snacks go get comfy we here for the long ride they gotta send us home my boy and that's how I went they had to send us home man shout out to my dog I became cool with this one cat that was from um, New York City we had actually took the same like Uber to the airport to go home, you feel me? Dog driving to the airport, like, yeah, man, I can't see nothing at night time. I can't see, you can't see nothing at night time, boys. Dog said, you can't see nothing at night time. Like, dog, you driving us. I mean, you can't see at night time. Nah, it was like, he came to pick us up at like six, so it was turning into like sunlight, but it was still kind of dark. And I'm like, bro, you can't see at night time. Yeah, dog, it's just like a, the ride was like an hour and 45 minutes home with just ride with us, ride with us, dog. So, I said, peace out to homie. I ain't really heard from dog since or seen him since, but while we was in there, we ran them bands up and we got to it, man. Shout out to homie, you feel me? And that's what I learned from like, that's what I learned from traveling as a wrestler toy therapist, man. All that stuff being said, at the end of the day, man, it's people out here that's just like you, got the same interests as you. Got the same ambition as you, the same drive as you. They got the same goal as you. Run these bands up, get back to their people, man. No plan, no joke, and we finna get this fatty. They was big money bound. They didn't even know it. And I didn't come in their faces, yeah, I'm big money bound. I didn't do that. Some of the people still don't know. Some of them found out. Like, I told you. That's like, that's Randy? That's he on YouTube? I used to work with him. That's like, you did? Yeah, he got his own YouTube channel. People say they work with you out here. Like, so, yeah, man. Shout out to all the supporters. Everybody I ran into, if you going into that travel field, man, you know, be safe, get your money, but most importantly, man, just get back to your family. Thank y'all for watching. I appreciate all of the support. Thank you.